Welcome back to CS201 walkthroughs. Today I want to talk about doing stuff in TC201s. So in TC201s, uh, we have something like 15 or 16 of these opcodes, right? If it's four binary bits, um, then we can represent 16 numbers that way, right? All the way from 0000, which is zero, to 1111, which is 15, total of 16 codes. Um, and they represent these instructions, at least in a previous version of the P set. They might have changed a little bit by now, so don't, don't get mad at me, but um, I'm sure you can still figure out how to do the your specific ones. Some of these down here might have changed, but don't worry too much about it. I'm sure you can figure it out or come into office hours or get help somehow else. Um, but let's talk a little bit about these different things in reference to kind of an example TC201 that I talked about in the last video. Um, so do load and do store. Or first let's remind ourselves, so these four bit opcodes uh, go at the beginning of our, um, the beginning of our kind of RAM addresses. So our RAM will end up being, you know, a bunch of 16 bit numbers, right? So, you know, zero, 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 blah, 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 blah. A bunch of 16-bit numbers will represent our RAM. The first four of each of them represent opcodes. And those opcodes tell us which one of these to do. Okay, so if the opcode is one, at least in this version of the PSET, we're going to do load. So if you remember my example, um, if the number they input, the second number they input was negative, I wanted to output the first number. In order to output the first number, I need to store and load that first number. So after they input the first number, I said store it in a num store. Num store will come to be an address. So do store takes an address, takes whatever's in the accumulator at that time, and it puts it into that location uh, in the RAM. So that should kind of make it clear what you need to do for do store. Um, you look at the accumulator and you like RAM write it to a specific location indicated by the address you passed. Uh, do load is similar, except for you're going to be taking from, you're going to be RAM reading from a location in the RAM and bringing that up into the accumulator. Do add and do sub also take addresses. So here's, here's add here, I think. I add two to their input number. Um, Two here is not actually the number two. Two is the address of some data. So when I assemble this, this will actually have, you know, the first four bits will be the opcode for add and the lower 12 bits will be uh, the address in memory of two. So it'll be the binary number for 13. Um, it'll take, okay, so do add takes this address. It loads its number, you know, the lower order 12 bits turns that into a number and adds it to whatever number is in the accumulator. So here I had the number two, I was adding it to the number three that was in the accumulator. Basically you change and update the value of the accumulator. Do sub is similar except for, again, you get past an address and the config, you take uh, the number that's at that address and subtract it away from the accumulator. Make sure you're doing your binary math right. Um, do input and do output. They don't need kind of an address. Here I've just passed them zero. It uh, doesn't really matter, but for assemble to work, I think you might have to pass it. No, maybe not. Um, but these zeros kind of don't matter because input doesn't need an address. You just read from the user. Output, you just output whatever's in the accumulator. Input, you take that read from the user and you put it into the accumulator so you can kind of work with it. Again, this should make a lot of sense if you watched the previous video on this example, TC201. If not, you may be confused. Do jump, we used in our example, I think here, kind of as our conditional, right? So if, or you know, skip and jump, I think are really form the, the fundamentals of a conditional in a TC201. Skip allows us to skip instructions and jump allows us to go to another section of code. So jump takes an address and it'll just set the program counter to that address. So we use this to say, uh, if our number is positive, again, this zero here means nothing. We're just looking at the accumulator. Then don't do this jump, kind of go to the next one. 
if it is not positive, we're gonna jump down and instead start executing this other section of code. So jump, all it does is update the program counter. Skip, again, looks at the accumulator. All of these skip pause, skip zero, and skip, or I guess pause and zero. Look at the accumulator to see what values in the accumulator. Skip ERR for error, I think looks at the arithmetic error bit to make sure, you know, if you wanted to check that the math was all good, then you can skip errors and kind of jump to another section of code that'll, I don't know, maybe ask the user for the number again or, or process the error in some way. Um, so all these skips kind of increment the program counter over here by two in certain conditions, which I'll describe in the problem. Do load i and store i are similar to load and store, except they're indirect, so this i stands for indirect. Um, so they take an address of an address to load from. I don't have an example in my program here, um, but I could put, you know, a data line down here, and I could uh, try to think of a good way to explain how Lodi and Stori are functional. Um, ah, okay, so the, the main usage for these, maybe I'll try to show you really quickly, is kind of in a pointer sort of fashion. So I can store a whole bunch of numbers without knowing how many numbers they're gonna pass me. If I have, say here I have, uh, I'm gonna call this pointer. I'm gonna call, uh, it's just going to be data. Uh, yeah, and it's going to be um, the address of num1. Okay, I'll fix my parentheses. So, uh, and here I'm going to put num1, data, 0. So for this, we have to first remember that any lines of a RAM that are not specified are assumed to be zeros um, all the way. So 16 zeros in a row. And what I can do is I can have this pointer kind of be constant. Earlier, I can have some loop that says something like store i in pointer. And then I can increment pointer, so I can like load, add, and store pointer. So first, pointer will start as this number, right? In this case, this would be 16, right? So pointer would, num1 would get replaced by 16 when you assemble. And when I store i in pointer, it would store a number here. So say I store the number 3. Then I increment this number in pointer, load pointer, store, uh, add one, store that pointer. I can make this something like 17. So now when I store I in pointer again, it'll store that number here. Maybe I store the number five. So this is kind of, uh, that was a little bit confusing example, but basically I can have a pointer and I can have that pointer, in pointer increment, but the same command can store in different locations because I'm changing this pointer. Um, the same thing for load i. So I can basically kind of loop through uh, and load from these various locations based on a pointer. If, if you work with C, this might be more familiar because you have pointers that point to arrays and you can change those pointers by, you know, change what those pointers point to by changing the pointer values. That's essentially what you're doing here. Shift is a way of doing some math so if I have a binary number like the number 3, I can multiply the number 3 by 2 by adding a 0 to the right. So this is now the number 6. Or I can divide it by 2 uh, by removing a 0 from the right. So if I have like, I think this is the binary number uh, 2 plus 8 is 10. And if I remove this 0, I think it becomes 5. So shift, you're basically shifting your number to the left or right and then padding the zeros. Here, if I shift this again, it'll become uh, two. So you kind of floor the number after you divide it by two. Not in XOR are, uh, I'm not gonna try to explain what, what they can be used for, but basically you're applying again some operations to the value in the accumulator. Okay, I, I hope I've kind of discussed these in some way that helps you understand 
the purpose of what you're doing and how to code them. Um, this might help you a little bit. Maybe if you're writing your TC201 and thinking about what, what do's to use, what kind of commands you should be calling when writing your TC201. Um, thanks for watching this video. Come into office hours with questions because I know this wasn't a very clear explanation of how these can be used. Uh, and good luck with your homework.